right now on the Northwestern News Report. Wildcats across the globe are facing different levels of restrictions amid the pandemic. We hear from students about how reopening is going in their home states and countries. Like where it gets tricky is like how much can we like trust like each individual state to like make the best decision. That and more coming up on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news from my basement right now. Hello and welcome to the Northwestern News Report. I'm Savannah Kelly. Illinois' stay-at-home order is set to expire at the end of this month. Meanwhile, in Texas, where restrictions were lifted at the end of April, many businesses are open but limited to 25% capacity. NNN's Megan Leibowitz and Olivia Olander speak with students in these states about responses to COVID-19. While Northwestern students are quarantining across the world, others are starting to venture out. As restrictions started lifting in certain states, some experts fear another wave of the virus. We checked in with Susie Vasquez and Simone Perez, former politics reporters for Mandel News Service, about their experiences in their hometowns. Susie lives in Cypress, Texas, outside Houston, and Simone lives in the city of Moline in downstate Illinois. So just to start us off, um, we wanted to ask you both about your personal experiences being at home. Um, Susie, just to start with you, have you gone out since Texas started to reopen and what have you seen um, out there? Um, so I, I don't go out a lot, but I have gone out just like a few times to like pick up coffee or like go to the grocery store. Now that everything is like open at 25% capacity, like I'll go to coffee shops and like pick up a coffee and I'll see people like sitting at tables and stuff. Um, like with their friends, not wearing masks. Um, and Simone, what's it like being in a state that still has one of the strictest orders in the country, Illinois, but also bordering Iowa, which never had a statewide stay-at-home order? Yeah, um, it's like a tale of two cities, really. Um, it just depends. I mean, and like, we're like one regional economy, so our our it's odd having one half of the economy open and the other not being open. But you can definitely tell people in Illinois take it seriously because our county is like right behind Chicago in like the per person or whatever rate of like growth with uh, with COVID. Um, but it has, but like, yeah, people will not wear masks. People will say we need to open everything. And, and as it gets nicer too, it's people are starting to go more out and go to drive throughs to get food or like social distancing with their neighbors on porches and stuff. But Overall, people are taking it seriously. So Susie, what have you seen from people our age specifically um, in terms of responding to the state's shutdown and now reopening? Harris County, which is the county I live in, has like the highest amount of cases in Texas um, and the highest amount of deaths. Um, and like our judge, Lena Hidalgo, like she's a Democrat and she put in basically like a mask order and said like you could get fined for a thousand dollars and like the governor of texas basically like voided that and was like we recommend wearing masks but like if you don't wear one like nothing's gonna happen to you basically um and i think that's why like a lot of people haven't been wearing them because it's not really required um but i would say like people my age i think take it more seriously than like older people like i think a lot of people's parents like a lot of adults um, that I know just like don't really understand like why you have to wear a mask. Um, I would say being your age, I what from what I've experienced hasn't had much to do with it. It's really been a very partisan pandemic, really. I mean, it's almost like we're like you're you're either in one reality where this virus is a big deal and you're gonna tr trust Dr. Fauci and the other medical experts telling you to wear masks and to stay inside and don't interact with other people. Well, the other half is saying to open up and sacrifice the elderly on the altar of them wanting to go to a nail salon. It's really like a political pandemic. Um, for our last question, just to bring it a little closer to home, um, in an email on May 11th, President Shapiro said the university is looking to reopen on-campus activity in phases. Um, students right now are living across states, obviously, with a variety of different orders. So what do you think is the best way to bring students back onto campus and to reopen safely? Susie, let's start with you. I just can't imagine us, like, going back in the fall. Like, I don't think it's plausible um, to do it, like, in a safe way just because, like, 
there are students from like all over the country and all over the world and we just like don't know where things are going to be in September. I think really we're going to have to see a drastic change in the, the summer, whether it be a vaccine, whether it be a way more proactive approach from the federal government to help tr contract tracing and help get tests for every American to, so we can just finally figure out, you know, the, the path this virus is taking through the country. And so for Northwestern, I would just say that um, live, students living in close quarters in dorms is not a good idea. Um, students just being in Chicago, I don't think is a good idea. I mean, I'm, I'm sad we can't go back in the fall too, but we got to think about the student safety. And I think that might just be going back next year, sadly, you know. That's actually all the time that we have. Um, but thank you so much, um, both of you, for uh, taking the time to chat with us this afternoon. I'm Megan Leibowitz. And I'm Olivia Olander. Stay safe. Good night. That panel originally ran on NNN's political talk show, Politicat. Head to twitter.com slash politicatnnn for more politics content. Thanks so much, Megan and Olivia. Some international students have returned to their home countries for quarantine but different countries have vastly different rules. I, I actually obviously stopped keeping up because at this point, I'm not going to go out anyway still. Like, I feel like sometimes government, like governments just do it under pressure and like, I don't really trust it. So I'm just going to like venture out when I think the numbers are going down. Agarwal says she's only left her house twice since the lockdown began in March. My parents are really paranoid. So like, I had this like, whole wisdom tooth issue and like they didn't let me go to the hospital for it. A few thousand miles east from Mumbai in China and South Korea, the spread of COVID-19 is slowing and students who live there are seeing restrictions loosen. NNN's Jenny Ha has the story. With ongoing uncertainty as to when social distancing will end, many Northwestern students here in the U.S. long to go outside, meet friends and dine in at restaurants. Meanwhile, life is slowly returning back to normal for some international students in China and South Korea. When I came to Korea, self-quarantine was still voluntary, but strongly advised. Weinberg freshman Chloe Lee volunteered to self-isolate for two weeks when she returned to South Korea in March. Everyone had to download an app where they had to report symptoms every day. Everyone just did it because it's a social obligation rather than like legal. In China, the government requires international travelers to stay in hotels, even if they have family residences. The 14 days quarantine is very strict. You can not leave the hotel. You cannot leave the room. After 14 days, we got like a certificate of quarantine and we have to carry that. People in China must also always have their color QR code available to show public officials. A green code allows one to enter any open public space. A yellow code means the person may be asked to self-isolate for seven days. And a red code means the person has COVID-19 or did not self-isolate after entering China's borders. They must undergo a two-week quarantine. In all the public spaces, even to go into our house, we have to show the security our green code. Even as life starts returning to normal in China and South Korea, people are being cautious. The atmosphere is a little bit loosened up and I see some people going out, but I feel like generally people still have like that social obligation just to like not go full out. The same in China. I went out with my friends a few times. We went to eat hot pot. A lot of the restaurants right now won't allow the whole, like the house to be full. But while acknowledging U.S. students' struggles and fears of indefinite social distancing, international students feel that the general attitudes and reactions toward COVID-19 are different. Whether it be protests to quickly reopen states or wearing masks. The whole perception like towards wearing masks is very negative in the U.S., I feel like. They hope those in the U.S. can remain patient for a little while longer. When the people were under quarantine in China, a lot of people were mad as well because, you you know, like they weren't able to have fun and they could, all they could do was at home. And now China's open. International students also recommended picking up a hobby during quarantine, especially if you have an unfinished bucket list with house activities, of course. 
These students, who have been in quarantine for longer than their U.S. peers, hope that their advice can ease the boredom and fears of those in the U.S. Reporting from my home in California, Jenny Ha, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Jenny. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Savannah Kelly, and from all of us here at NNN, thank you for watching and stay safe.